A very good Friday evening to all our viewers. You're watching Primetime News coming to you live and direct from our News First studios here in Colombo. For the News First team, I'm Mariam Ganamujaya. Before we head on to our stories in detail, here is a look at your headlines. Local Government Election Gazette on the way. Elections Chief says relevant agencies agreed to support the election. Finance Secretary says Finance Minister has final say on releasing funds. Second privilege issue raised in Parliament over Supreme Court's interim order on local government election. <laughs> Attorneys warn government to stop attempting to delay election. Professionals say talks with finance secretary on tax policy failed. Report reveals that expired tear gas was used on protests. Civil activists go to UN against oppression. Namal Rajapaksha, Chamal Rajapaksha and Sarat Veerasekara appointed as chairmen of parliament committees. On to your lead story this evening, a protest against oppression took place opposite the United Nations office in Colombo this afternoon. The Inter-University Students' Federation, civil activists, trade unions, among others, took part in the protest against oppression opposite the United Nations office in Colombo. The protest was against the deaths caused by deploying tear gas, cinnamon stick armies, using tear gas on school students, and forced entry by police into universities. <laughs> We as citizens have the right to speak on the issues affecting the country. Every citizen has that right. Rani Vikramasinghe is using the police and the cinnamon stick army with batons and steel poles and the armed forces to attack the people. The government is using expired tear gas munitions as chemical weapons as their means of oppression. Comrade Priyanta died during the Jatika Janabalavege protest. On the 7th, a security officer at the Colombo University died. Before that, a young man died due to poisonous tear gas close to parliament. So far, tear gas is responsible for three deaths. We need an international investigation into the use of expired tear gas munitions. Who were the masked paramilitary personnel armed with sticks, present along with the army and the police? Who gave the right to fire tear gas at children? The UN must look at the gross human rights violations. They ask for aid from these organizations and are oppressing the people. The people have no way to survive. There needs to be an end to deploying the police and the army to crack down on dissent. <laughs> military personnel were armed with poles in the back of their shirts and when a question was posed to the military spokesperson, he says he doesn't know who they are. The government is killing the people to keep up with the IMF conditions. However, we are not ready to die. The Socialist Youth Union filed a request with the police headquarters seeking information on the attacks on protest marches and demonstrations that took place recently. The request was filed under the Right to Information Act. Article 19.1G of the Chemical Weapons Convention Act No. 58 of 2007 says any person using any right control agent as a method of warfare shall be with imprisonment of 20 years. Tear gas is banned even during war as it makes it impossible to identify the civilians. The government is arbitrarily deploying tear gas and water cannons.
A report prepared by the Centre for Society and Religion on the use of tear gas in Sri Lanka has revealed that Sri Lanka police has not conducted any laboratory test over the contents of tear gas munitions. The report filed based on the information obtained via the Right to Information Act revealed that Sri Lanka police had used expired tear gas munitions to disperse protests in 2022 and some of those munitions were produced back in 2000. It noted that in 2012 a total of 20,000 tear gas munitions were procured and until 2016 only 2,306 of those units were used. The report added that the remaining munitions were to expire in 2017, however they were not disposed. It added that from 2012 to 2019 a total of over 40,000 tear gas munitions were to expire and during that period 8,265 tear gas munitions were used on protests and another 31,735 expired tear gas munitions remain in service. The report from the Center for Society and Religion noted that the handling of tear gas munitions by Sri Lanka police totally violates all instructions given by the manufacturers including to not deploy the munitions close to live firearms and not to fire them directly at protesters. It added that from March to July 2022, during the period of the worst economic crisis in the country, Sri Lanka police deployed 6,722 tear gas munitions on 84 separate occasions at a cost of 26 million rupees. It also noted the highest number of tear gas munitions fired by Sri Lanka police on a single day was recorded during protests in 2022, where around 100 munitions were fired on protests daily. Tear gas munitions procured in 2020 contained 105 grams of the chemical and it means that dangerous tear gas was used during the recent past. This was confirmed in our investigation. They used expired tear gas. The average lifespan of a tear gas munition is five years and for what was purchased in 2000 should be expired in 2005. However, those munitions were used 22 years later in 2022. Although the documents are not with us, we found out that the tear gas munition was produced in 2005. Tear gas munitions produced in 2000, 2005 and 2010 were used in 2011, 2012, 2014 and 2016. Discussions in Parliament today focused on the manner in which protesters are dispersed. The university students in the country have been severely affected by state terrorism and state violence. There was a person named Wan Inayaka, a resident of Nochiagama, who served as a security guard. He fell sick after inhaling that tear gas and died. Students of Royal College were also attacked with tear gas. When students are facing such situations, what steps are you going to take as the Minister of Education? These officers are having certain items that look like branches from trees. The Army Media spokesperson is saying that they they don't know as to if or not those are members of the Sri Lanka army. So these people are wearing uniforms, carrying weapons and cinnamon sticks. A baton has a specific shape and a specific color and also a specific length. They are coming onto the streets with different types of poles. Is this a reserve army? They had grey hair under their helmets. They could be older members of the army. But the pictures showed soldiers with grey hair. I clearly state that it was avant-garde that had these kinds of armies. They are sending those army units. Also, Honorable Chairman, the way that people are dying, how did our comrade Nimal die? He was attacked with tear gas. Afterwards, he was all right for about two to three hours. He even attended our meeting. After that, he vomited. Then he died. Then there is the security officer at the Colombo campus. He is not even a member of the protest. He was the security officer at the university. Tear gas was fired at the security guard. He starts vomiting after some time and he dies. We don't even know what they are firing at these people. Instead of resolving these issues with the people at the polling booth, they are trying to take this matter into another field. Ranil Vikramasinghe is swinging a sword and calling the people to come for a battle. But there is no one else on that field. We will not take up the sword and we will not come to battle with him. He will have to keep swinging that sword and he is going to end up cutting his own stomach. He wants us to come onto that field, but we will not be going there.
State Minister Shehan Sema Singha, raising a privilege issue in Parliament, requested not to proceed or take any action on the interim order with regard to the local government election until the Committee on Parliamentary Ethics and Privileges concludes its own hearing. On the 7th of March, MP Prem Natsi Dolavatta told Parliament that the powers and privileges of Parliament were violated by the interim order issued by the Supreme Court on the 3rd of March 2023, noting that it is also an interference with the sacrosanct powers vested in Parliament in respect of the control of public finances. On Friday the 10th, State Minister Shehan Semasingha raised the second privilege issue on the same matter. In the condition Honorable Speaker has accepted the question of breach of privileges raised by Honorable Premnatsi Dolavatta and presented it to the Committee on Parliamentary Ethics and Privileges. It is a serious offence to implement the interim order of the aforesaid case before hearing the said matter and making a decision. By tabling the letter of the Chairman of the Elections Commission, I request uh, the Honorable Deputy Speaker to advise all relevant authorities not to proceed further or take any action on the above said matter until the Privileges Committee con uh, concludes its inquiry. The government is claiming that the judiciary and the election commission are violating privileges in an attempt to tame these institutions. This needs to end now. Do not assume the judiciary will be intimidated. If this continues, the judiciary will take strict action. Privileges committee. What you are doing is allowing the finance secretary to delay responding to the Supreme Court's decision, citing that the matter is before the privileges committee. This has been sent to the Privileges Committee. Pave the way for it to proceed. Do not bow down to the opposition. Advice before my speech is over. Do not turn off the mic. Take back the decision. This is another part of the government conspiracy. We cannot allow delaying elections by hiding behind the MP privileges. MP Dolavatta claims his privileges were violated. The courts have in fact given an order to strengthen the powers of parliament. However, you want to summon the judges to the parliament. One person wants to delay the election and thus such intimidation is taking place. We need to oppose this. What was Gotabe's mandate? It was a mandate against Ranil. That is why the local government mandate is important. If the proposal by State Minister Shehan Sema Singha is allowed, the case heard at the Supreme Court has to be stopped. The Parliament has no right to issue an order on the Supreme Court. The Parliament has no right to interfere with the Supreme Court. MPs from the opposition, led by opposition leader Sajit Premadasa, on Friday met with the Deputy Speaker to discuss the privilege issues raised by State Minister Shehan Sema Singha and MP Prem Nath C. Dolavatta with regard to the Supreme Court order on funding the local government election. The opposition believes that such privilege issues create a conflict between the legislature and the judiciary. The opposition MPs have requested the Deputy Speaker to dismiss the privilege issue raised by MP Dolavatta and State Minister Sema Singha. The Samagi Janabalavega commented on the privilege issue that was raised in Parliament over the Supreme Court interim order. They are using MP Dolavatha to intimidate the Supreme Court. If there is any attempt to use parliamentary privileges and intimidate the Supreme Court, I challenge MP Dolavatha to make those comments outside the Parliament. 
He would never do that because he is afraid. They're trying to create an issue between the judiciary and the parliament. We are aware of what they did to Shirani Bandaranaika. The day they fire tear gas at the Supreme Court is not far away. They cannot cope with the orders given by the Supreme Court. <laughs> The Freedom People's Congress commented on the upcoming election. Palatpal maturene pavatya yutuigila kiena niyogya sreshtadi karne uparimadi karne avisin kudkri me mudahari me passe. The Supreme Court has issued an order to go ahead with the local government election. Now they have launched an attack on the judges. This attack is second only to the attack that took place during late President J.R. Jawardhana's time when stones were pelted at the homes of judges who ruled on human rights cases. People surrounded their homes and hooted. This is second only to that. Why are you talking about this? Anne, in the past, a city that has not been in the past, security. In a statement, the Election Commission said the government printer has informed that the ballot papers for postal voting can be delivered within five days and other ballot papers can be delivered within 20 to 25 days. The Election Commission has informed to obtain necessary funds for the printing purposes from the Finance Secretary. Further, the Election Commission has informed the government printer to provide all necessary details to the Inspector General of Police with regard to the provision of police security. It added that the senior DIG in charge of elections has informed that following such a request, the necessary police security can be provided. Further, officials from the CPC and the Ministry of Power and Energy are to reach an agreement in due course over the provision of fuel for the local government election. In addition, the National Election Commission has recommended that the basic salary of public sector employees who are contesting the election be paid only for the delayed period. Sri Lanka's Finance Secretary has informed the country's Election Commission that the request letter for funds for the local government election was directed to the Finance Minister for approval. This was in response to the letter sent to the Finance Secretary by the Election Commission on the 7th of March seeking funds for the local government election. Election Commission Chairman Attorney Nimal Punchiheva noted that the Finance Secretary had informed him of the fact that given the current situation in the country, the Finance Secretary's approval alone will be insufficient to provide funds for the local government election. Instead of making decisions to release the funds, the finance secretary is sending the matter back to the finance minister to issue the necessary orders. Who is the finance minister? It's President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Who is going to make great attempts to delay the election? It is President Ranil Vikramasinghe. So once again, the matter goes back to President Ranil Vikramasinghe to decide on releasing funds. Section 208 of the financial regulations make it clear on the grant of allocations for expenditure by one department as an agent of another. Rather than giving excuses, Shanta Bandara also has an obligation to follow the rules and regulations. At a time when an election has been declared, it is important for the state mechanism to comply with those orders. It is clearly mentioned in the articles. If that duty is not fulfilled, legal action can be taken. The lawyers of the Jatika Janabalavegia commented on the matter during a media briefing. We have doubts if the influence on the Supreme Court judges through Privileges Committee is a plot to delay the election. Not going above the Parliament, but the Parliament has financed the election for now. It is the order given by the court to stop the arbitrary suspension by the finance minister. The Supreme Court is not below the parliament in any means. When there is a matter before the Supreme Court, it is the parliamentary tradition to not to express any ideas on that matter. That rule has also been violated by this parliament. Also, 
referring to the Committee of Ethics and Privileges, means that the Parliament is preparing to probe the matter. This should be condemned by all the citizens, organizations and political parties. <laughs> The strike action by the university teachers against the tax policy entered its second day on Friday. The strike was launched on Thursday in line with the trade union action launched by the Professionals Trade Union Collective against the government's unfair tax policy. Academic activities across government universities came to a standstill due to the strike action. All Federation of University Teachers Association members have withdrawn from all the academic and other activities since yesterday. We are once again reminding the government to not let the current situation continue and to provide a solution and contribute in solving this matter as soon as possible. Education Minister Susil Prema Jayanta told Parliament that the strike action by university teachers could likely result in a delay in conducting the ordinary level examination. The evaluation of answer scripts has been delayed by two weeks. That means the results will also be delayed. The O-level exam was to be held in May. That too will likely be delayed. And the advanced level exam will also be delayed. Another issue will arise in covering the syllabus. We need to close the schools for 23 days for the advanced level exam. For the ordinary level exam, we need to close the schools for two weeks. These children were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic for two years. I appeal the university teachers not to involve the tax with the evaluation process. We will address the demands. <laughs> The Professionals Trade Union Collective said that talks with the Finance Ministry on the tax policy failed. We pointed out that it was unjust to impose this tax on the middle-income earners. In addition, we presented alternatives. We did not get the expected result during today's session. As professionals, we want this tax reformed. It must be revised. We hope to discuss this in the future. Sadly, we did not get the expected solution. We will engage in strict trade union action from next week. The Professionals Trade Union Collective comprises of 40 trade unions and we are in talks with other unions as well. The government of Japan has contributed an additional 6.6 .6 million US dollars to the United Nations World Food Program to provide critical food and nutrition assistance to over 1 million Sri Lankans. Through this funding, the World Food Program will provide families with food baskets comprising rice, pulses and cooking oil to meet half their monthly food needs for a period of two months. The donation will also be used to procure maize, soybeans for the production of three portia, a fortified food product for a period of four months, which will be supplied to pregnant and breastfeeding mothers and young children at risk of malnutrition. Mizukoshi Hideki, ambassador of Japan to Sri Lanka, said, quote, Food aid through WFP by the government of Japan has reached a total of 10 million US dollars since the economic crisis began last year. This support is being used to provide essential food and nutrition to communities across the nation. Unquote. WFP's latest surveys indicate that food insecurity is still at a concerningly high level. Seven in every ten households are adopting negative coping strategies such as cutting back on nutritious food like protein and dairy or skipping meals altogether. Representative and country director of WFP Sri Lanka, Abdur Rahim Siddiqui, said, quote, Our biggest concern is for the women and children who are among those affected by the impacts of the economic crisis. Unquote. In the meantime, the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission, Janaka Ratnayaka, filed a fundamental rights application at the Supreme Court challenging the electricity tariff hike. Issuing a statement, the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka said the petition has been filed by Janaka Ratnayaka in both his capacity as an electricity consumer and the public interest. The petition challenges the process by which the PUCSL had approved the electricity tariff proposed by the Ceylon Electricity Board. The petition states that the purported approval given by the commission is an unlawful decision of three members of the commission and not a decision of the commission. News first. Main sponsor. 23% for two months. 25% for four months. Valuable FD. The boy gets the biggest piece. Show them that being a woman is not an incompetence. 
girls sit in the back seat. Guide them into a joyous world with no discrimination. Here, wash my nose. Teach them she is beneath no one. That hers and his value are the same. Small acts of intimidation can lead to future violence. Teach them respect and stop this violence at its earliest. A trusted place for your fixed deposits. Valuable FD. 23% for two months. 25% for four months. Valuable FD. A symbol of stability. The Ministry of Trade says that the prices of many essential food items is dropping, with the Sri Lankan rupee appreciating against the US dollar. Minister Nalin Fernando says that trade organizations have agreed to pass down these benefits to the general public. But what is the real situation in the market? News First's Shania Badigama filed this report. I am here today at the public market in Nugegura. Here the hardships of securing essential food items is extremely evident. Just having a look around these stalls, you can see that basic food items have drastically increased in price. Just last year, rice was 163 rupees per kilo, but this year it's 220. Last year, dal was only 331 rupees per kilo, but this year it's risen to 420 rupees per kilo. Last year, a kilo of chicken was only 740 rupees, but this year it's 1,240 rupees. One coconut last year was 85 rupees, but this year it's 120 rupees. 100 grams of pepper last year was 85 rupees, but this year you would have to buy 100 grams of pepper for 300 rupees. Capsicum prices, however, have reduced to 600 rupees. Egg prices have risen from 17 rupees and 50 cents last year and prices of certain types of fish have gone up by 1000 rupees. It is unbelievable to imagine the plight of lower income families who bear the brunt of these price hikes. We also looked into the situation in areas outside of Colombo as well. After increasing the price of goods by 100 rupees at a time when the rupee has depreciated against the dollar, the prices should be reduced by 20%. This is a joke. A year ago, the price of this cloth was priced at 60 rupees. Today, the price is between 575 to 600 rupees. How can a regular person afford to sew clothes from this? Sabang <laughs> News first with the people. In the meantime, chairman for sectoral oversight committees and parliament were appointed. Parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksha on Thursday was appointed as the new chairman of the Sectoral Oversight Committee on International Relations of the Sri Lankan Parliament. MP Sarat Virasekara was appointed as the chairman of the Sectoral Oversight Committee on National Security. 
Moreover, MP Chamal Rajapaksha was unanimously appointed as the chair to the Committee on Ethics and Privileges for the fourth session of the ninth parliament on Thursday. Tonight on our special segment dedicated for Women's Day, we take a look at a member of the Sri Lanka Army Women's Corps. This is Major Hiruni Vimala Ratna. In 2009, she joined the General Sir John Kotalawala Defence University and was commissioned as a second lieutenant to serve as an officer with the Sri Lanka Women's Corps. At present, she serves with the Senehas Education Resource Research and Information Centre. She takes pride in being among few Sri Lanka Army female paratroopers and is a national level performer in boxing, sailing, netball and athletics. A female soldier serves the role of mother, daughter, sister, friend and wife in society. I give my family life and professional life equal prominence. Therefore, I have an unblemished 14-year career with a happy family life. If you become courageous and patient, you can win a lot. Engineering Equity Fireside Chat and Event to mark the International Women's Day was held in Colombo yesterday. The event was held to raise awareness for the shortage of women role models in tech as a major barrier that continues through university and higher education. A panel discussion titled Why Equity in Tech Won't Happen Unless We Engineer It was held during the event. High-profile female tech leaders spoke at the event. Celebrating the life and work of the late Lucky Sena Naika. Artra Magazine's launch of the Lucky Serenaka edition and Art Experiential Festival. Saturday, 11th March at 5.30 p.m. on TV1. Streaming live on News First's Facebook and YouTube channels. Era hatte nie mag hatte. In your cricket news update, Lahiru Kumara and Asita Fernando took two wickets each as New Zealand crumbled to 162 for five at stumps on day two against Sri Lanka in the first test in Christchurch. Sri Lanka posted 305 runs at the loss of six wickets on the opening day of the game after New Zealand skipper Tim Southey won the toss and opted to bowl first. Tim Southey bagged five wickets as Sri Lanka were bowled out for 355 on day two. Kusal Mendes shines with an 87-run knock while Dimut Karuna Ratna scored 50. Tom Latham and Devon Conway gave the hosts a strong start adding 67 runs for the first wicket before three quick dismissals turned the tide in Sri Lanka's favour. Lahiru Kumara and Asita Fernando took two wickets each as New Zealand crumbled to 162-5 to five at stumps on day two against Sri Lanka in the first test in Christchurch. The inaugural sports meet of Ethos International College Colombo 7 was held today. Deputy General Manager of Brand Marketing of Sri Lanka Mobitel, Indika Amarasuria, was the chief guest of the closing ceremony of the inaugural sports meet of Ethos International College. The three-day event included swimming, basketball, badminton tournaments and field and track events. And that's a wrap of this edition of Primetime News here on News First. For the News First team, I'm Mariam Ganavijaya. Good night and take care.